right. Now, uh, this is uh, something that we do every year, uh, and I saved it for my appearance here before you. Uh, if you'll recall, there is something called the Darwin Awards. And uh, remember the guy who attached the rocket, you know, to his Chevrolet and everything? Are these the guys? Well, every year they find somebody like that. And we got another one, folks. <laughs> uh, here's th th this, is, uh, this is the Darwin Award. This is the announcement here. The, the uh, Darwin Award winner for 1997 announced. You all know about the Darwin Awards. It's an annual honor given to the person who did the gene pool the biggest service by killing themselves in the most extraordinarily stupid way. <clears throat> the 1995 winner was the fellow who was killed by a Coke machine which toppled over on top of him as he was attempting to tip a free soda out of it. In 1996, the winner was an Air Force sergeant who attached a jet engine, a JATO unit, to his car and crashed into a cliff several hundred feet above the road. And now, the 1997 winner, Larry Waters of Los Angeles, who is one of the few Darwin winners to survive his award-winning accomplishment. Larry's boyhood dream was to fly. But when he graduated from high school, he joined the Air Force in hopes of becoming a pilot. Unfortunately, poor eyesight disqualified him. When he was finally discharged, he just had to si uh, satisfy himself by watching jets flying overhead in his backyard. Well, one day, Larry had a bright idea. He decided to fly. He went to the local Army-Navy surplus store and purchased 45 weather balloons and several tanks of helium. The weather balloons, when fully inflated, would measure more than four feet across. Back home, Larry securely strapped the balloons to his sturdy lawn chair. <laughs> I'm not making this up. He anchored the chair to the bumper of his Jeep and inflated the balloons with the helium. He climbed on for a test while it was only still a few feet above the ground. Satisfied that it would work, Larry packed several sandwiches <laughs> and a six-pack of Miller Lite. <laughs> And he loaded his pellet gun, <laughs> figuring he would pop a few balloons when it was time to descend. <laughs> then he went back to the floating lawn chair, and he tied himself into the lawn chair along with his pellet gun and provisions. Larry's plan was to lazily float up to a height of about 30 feet above his backyard after severing the anchor, and in a few hours he'd come back down. Well, things didn't quite work out that way, folks. <laughs> when he cut the cord anchoring the lawn chair to his Jeep, he did not float lazily up to 30 feet or so. <laughs> Instead, he streaked into the sky as if shot from a cannon. <laughs> he did not level off at 30 feet. He did not level off at 100 feet. After climbing and climbing, he leveled off at 11,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> At that height, he could not risk shooting any of the balloons, <laughs> lest he unbalance the load and really find himself in trouble. So he just stayed there, <laughs> drifting, cold and frightened, for more than 14 hours. <laughs> then he really got in trouble. He found himself drifting into the primary approach pattern of LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. The first person to spot Larry was the United Airlines pilot who radioed the tower that he was at 11,000 feet descending and he just passed a guy in a lawn chair with a gun. LAX figured he'd been sampling the liquor. <laughs> but radar confirmed the existence of an object floating 11,000 feet above the airport. LAX emergency procedures swung into full alert, and a helicopter was dispatched to investigate. Now, LAX is right on the ocean. 
night was falling and the offshore breeze began to flow and it carried Larry out to sea with the helicopter in hot pursuit. Several miles out, the helicopter caught up with Larry. Once the crew determined that Larry was not dangerous, <laughs> no, he's just dangerously stupid, they attempted to close in for a rescue. But the draft from the blades of the helicopter kept pushing Larry away <laughs> whenever they got close to him. Finally, the helicopter climbed to a position several hundred feet above Larry, and they lowered a rescue line. <laughs> Larry engaged the line and was hauled back to shore, and the difficult maneuver was flawlessly executed by the helicopter crew. As soon as Larry was hauled to Earth, he was arrested. <laughs> I guess for criminal stupidity, I don't know. <laughs> it says, as he was led away in handcuffs, a reporter dispatched to co cover the daring rescue asked why he had done it. Larry stopped, turned around, and replied, a man can't just sit around. <laughs> oh, boy. We'll take a break, and I'll be right back. I gotta recover from that one. <laughs> you will stay tuned through the commercials. You will wait patiently for the return of G. Gordon Liddy. Dismissed.